G'day, welcome to the channel, it's James here. Today we're gonna to be checking out cove lighting. Now cove lighting is an indirect form of lighting. So you see the effect of the light, but you don't see the light source itself. So it gives quite a nice soft lighting effect. Now we're at an office fit out just here, and there's quite a bit of cove lighting going in. So this would be a good place to check it out, see the ins and outs of how it works and how you could go about installing some if you wanted to use it yourself. All right, let's go check it out. Okay, so I've got all my, my LED strip cut to length and it's in sections according to how the cove is installed. So we've got sections along there and I've just cut all the different sections to fit in each, in each length. Now we're gonna have the light sitting in the top and it's gonna shine up onto the ceiling and light this whole area. Now one of the first things to note about this, this form of lighting is you do end up using a lot of it. So in this little office here, we've got 50 meters of cove just in this hallway and in these two rooms here. So it's a lot more than what you might think. And this LED strip that we're using is 10 watts per meter. So if you do the maths on that, you've got about 500 watts of lighting in this area. So you're gonna need 500 watts of dri for drivers and also, of course, all the LED strip. And you've got to spend all the time like mounting it and soldering it together. Now I'll just open up one of these and we're gonna have a look inside and I'll show you what we've done inside of these um, channels. So we've got our LED strips just in here. And this, like I said, this is 10 watts per meter or 9.6 watts per meter. And the channel is important because it takes away the heat from the light. And this is a good quality LED strip. I got it from Color Diode. The link is in the description down the, down the bottom in the, in the video. And not all LED strip is the same. Um, so some of it is inferior, of course, and some of it is better. So the good things about this particular strip is the, color, um, the CRI or the color rendition index, which makes colors look nicer. So this is over 90, these LEDs. And also the strip itself is quite heavy duty. So some of the cheaper stuff is low, um, not as thick, the tracks on it. And as a result, you'll get bright here and not bright at the end. So you get volt drop over the length of the strip. And also with other, with other cheaper strips, sometimes you'll get differences in colors. And when you've got long lengths of it along the ceiling, you'll see one end is one color, one end is a different color. So if you're gonna have it as a feature, you usually get some good LED strip. Um, as you can see, we've got it in two lengths here. So this is a full, this is a four meter length. It's gonna go up over here. It's a four meter length. And I usually keep it to less than two meters and then I'll purposely have a join because you can get longer track. Um, but one thing about this, this track here is be careful not to butt it up close. Um, if you butt it up, you'll find this if you fix it to the bottom of a cabinet. Um, if you put it up hard against each other uh, then when this heats up a little bit, the aluminium track will actually expand and it'll make it bend and pop out. So you do need a little bit of spacing to allow for the heat expansion of the track itself. And because you won't see this, because it's gonna be hidden in the cove, um, I've just got these little loops here because you won't even see those at all. All right, so I've got all these lengths, all these pieces made up to length. I'm gonna start popping them in and then we can turn a section on and see what it looks like. Okay, now we're gonna have a look at the construction of the bulkhead itself, or the cove, so that it gives you the best light. So if you're building it from scratch, new, this is what I tried to describe to homeowners or builders trying to implement this design. So basically we've got the cove where the lighting strip sits, and we've got the ceiling here and the little cove, and then the face of the bulkhead, and then of course the floor's down here. Now ideally you wanna have that little tiny little lip there so that if you're standing back over here in an open room, you can't see the strip. And um, that sort of hides the, makes it look nice. But when it's nice and level with that top, it will spill over and give a nice soft pattern. Um, as you can see just here in the picture um, of what we have in the hallway, I've adjusted it so that it has that nice soft edge. And that's what I wanna try and achieve everywhere. Now you could also have it like this without a lip. It's a bit simpler to construct and you can just push the strip back and that looks good as well. 
Um, it might need to be a bit deeper. So this one would normally be about 50 mil by 50 mil, or maybe even 100 by 100. It can vary it depending on how big you want the cove to look and how big the room is. But this one here, it needs to go further back. But in an open room, if you're standing over here, you can tend to see this here. But in a hallway, then this, this would be fine as well. Unfortunately, what we've got here in this hallway is we've got a deep cove, which gives a sharp edge. And it's also not level or flat in this direction or down the length of the hallway. So you get this variation in the sharp edge of the light on the ceiling, which doesn't look very neat. Now overall, it is going to provide a nice light, but it's not going to be as nice as if you can achieve this when you're constructing a bulkhead. Okay, so I've got a strip light here, and this is what I made them all up on my workbench. So I'm just going to do a quick demo of how to solder them on. Now it's pretty straightforward. Now if you don't have a soldering iron, and you're only going to get one because you don't do a lot of soldering, then get one of these. These are the best. The T um, TS80P from Miniware, I think it is. Uh, they're brilliant. You can plug it into a battery, battery bank here. And this is what I use a lot. I use this one a lot when I'm out in the field. And when I'm at home, I use the T12. Now this was actually a bit cheaper. Um, and for the money, this is a brilliant soldering iron. It's not, ex not an expensive one, but it works really well. And this is the um, handle here. So if you just want a, a cheaper one, or you want one that you don't have to move around, then this is a great one too, the T12 Kruger, I think it is, from memory. Okay, so the solder that I'm going to use is leaded solder. Now if you use leaded solder, make sure you wash your hands properly or use gloves after you finish using it. Um, you should obviously solder in a ventilated space or have an exhaust fan um, to use to get rid of the fumes. And the wire that I'm using is this hookup wire, which I happen to get from Ultronics. Um, it's 014 millimeters square, this particular wire. And it's only rated at 1.5 amps, but I only use very short lengths of it. And it doesn't carry the entire um, current from the installation. It's only just to link between the short pieces of um, track just here. And the smaller wire makes it a bit easier to solder on and it gives it a, um, it's a bit more secure than trying to put a big fat cable onto here. Probably the largest cable you could really solder onto here comfortably is a 0.5 millimeter a figure eight cable. So let's get started and, and do a quick solder onto this little joint here. Okay, so you want to take um, your ends that you've stripped with a small pair of pliers and take your soldering iron and I've got mine set to 300 and if you just place it underneath the cable and dab a bit of solder on, and that's it. You will get a bit of insulation melting back like that, but it's not no big deal. Try not to get it, but it does happen. Uh, you can just um, trim a little bit off. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty much spot on. And then we'll just put a soldering iron on the pad here, on the track. And let the solder flow on. Now you can use unleaded solder. Some people might not like the fact that I'm using leaded solder, but it just doesn't work as well. You can totally use it, but it's a little bit, um, takes a little bit more practice. And then if you look at the track, it's got um, the positive and negative marked. Some strip light has it at every junction. So this color diode stuff is good and has it at every junction. Some I will only have it at the ends. So we just um, gently hold that there and apply a little bit of heat and that's soldered on like so and I've never ever had any trouble with it touching the track and shorting out um, never ever in many years but if you did want to you could use some um, you can lift this up a little bit and you could, you could have slide a piece of heat shrink tubing over it, something probably bigger than this, and you could slide it over and heat shrink it on if you're worried about it, but I have personally never had any problems with, with that happening. Um, but you could do that if you wanted to. Okay, the joins that you saw showing out of the ceiling, once you've soldered them together, um, you can actually put some heat, clear heat shrink tubing over it, and I actually just use one of these little tray flame things to shrink it down, and it's just got a little um, lighter inside of it, and it's 
very low power and it's perfect for just getting a little flame onto these these um, heat drinks and just shrinking it down like so to cover the joints. Uh, it's an easy way to seal it up and a bit neater than using um, tape, a bit easier, easier than using tape. And you can actually even use this um, to solder the wires together. So I'll just quickly show you. So this is obviously an example, you wouldn't solder a loop together. But if you had two wires joined together, which are you, I had in that job that along the ceiling line, um, then you can just get the little flame in there. You can gently heat it up without, without destroying the cables and just add a bit of solder. Um, it's a good way to, it's pretty handy these little, little soldering lines. And then of course, if you wanted to cover it up, Just put some heat shrink over it. That seals it up. Um, so that's some little tips about just installing this um, track lighting. Okay, so now all our strip lighting is in and it's all finished and tested and it's all working properly. All I have to do is seal up these joins and poke them back into the cove. And then of course, we've got to like go around and make um, the height all the same so it looks nice like this section here. Now, we're just going to talk about the feed points, so how the, the strip gets its power. So you can't just put it, the power to one end, you've got to feed it at various points in the, in the track, in the system. So one of the feed points is right down the end here, and this, especially along this long length, length here, it's seven metres long, um, I've got another end feed here, so that's fed from each end, that reduces the volt drop. And I've also got a feed point just here, and one just here. Um, so I'll just put a quick diagram on the screen of my lengths and where I've fed into the track, into the um, strip, and that goes to help stop volt drop. Now these light strips are 24 volt DC and I would recommend using only 24 volt. I just, it's much easier to work with, less volt drop, less current, um, you don't have to have quite a, a larger size cable, and it's just the way to go. Um, in these square rooms, it's quite easy. There's just one, I usually put one in diagonally opposite in each corner. Um, so that's what I've done in here. One in that corner and one over in that corner there. This light colour is 4000K, 4000 Kelvin, or cool white, some people call it. I think some people call it um, cool daylight. But it's, um, I've always known it as cool white. And it matches the downlights that we have here. We've got Unios downlights. Um, which are really nice downlights to put in. I've got them in my house as well. But these have a CRI of 92 or 95, I think. So it ma really makes colours look vibrant and really makes it look clear and crisp. Now, if you were to put a cheap light with um, low CRI, like around 80 or 85, next to one of these lights here, like you would stand out like immediately. Like one side would look sort of foggy and washed out and not, and not very colourful and the other side would look crisp and bright and you could really see the colours that were in the environments that you're lighting up. So CRI rating of the lights really does help to make the environment much nicer to be in, um, less foggy. And you can really see if you do have them side by side. But in here everything is over CRI 90 and cool white. All right, let's go check out the drivers that are powering these things. Okay, so these are the drivers that are driving our installation. Um, they're Tridonic and they're good quality drivers. I use them quite a bit. I've been using them for many years. Um, these are constant voltage, 24 volt DC, and they can go up to 200 watts, the, ones, the one doing the hallway. We've got one here that's going to do the floor lights, and these one, this one does the reception area. And these are going to be mounted up here in our switchboard, um, where they've got some ventilation to stay nice and cool. Now I've got a clamp meter attached to our hallway and we're drawing 7.33 amps. So that works out to about 177 watts if we um, calculate that using the voltage, which is pretty much what I expected. Now when I was putting those lights together, I tested each section um, with my power supply to make sure, see how much current it drew and to make sure that they were working correctly before I installed them. So that's how I knew that we would be under the 200 watt limit for this driver. Now, um, these drivers can be PWM dimmed. Not all drivers can, or some 
don't work very well if you try to PWM dim them, but these ones definitely can. So if you want dimmable lights and you want to use a PWM dimmer, make sure you select a driver that can handle it. And also the strips themselves, they can be PWM dimmed. And the colour diode site makes that clear which ones are, are dimmable. So that's two things to keep in mind when you're selecting your um, LED strips if you want to install code lighting like you, you've seen here today. All right, it's Friday afternoon and it's time to go grab a beer. So that's it for today. I um, hope this has been useful to you. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, of course, you can subscribe. Um, thanks for watching and catch you next time.